Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear myself, I guess you can hear me as well. Uh, so, my name is Maciej Treder, this is my handle. Uh, so, you can follow me uh, on all of those networks which logo types you see below under the same handle. Uh, I am from Krakow, Poland. I guess that most of you know where it is. Uh, and on my daily basis, I am working in Akamai Technologies. Uh, I'm just an Angular passionate and an open source contributor. Uh, in Akamai, we are creating the content delivery network. Uh, we are serving something like 40% of the internet traffic. And today, I would like to speak about the Angular schematics. Uh, so, the talk will be organized uh, in a couple sections. First, I'm going to start and tell you a little bit uh, how, how I get familiar with schematics and why. Uh, later on, we will move smoothly to two case studies, uh, which I would propose when the schematics could be used. Also, the story is the third case study, in fact. Later, we will have a huge section about developing schematics, then reporting, how to report issues uh, with the schematics, and finally, how to perform tests uh, on what you will develop for others. So starting with the story, as you probably know, everything begins with idea. So I have an idea to, perf to create yet another great application. Uh, on my own, it was, uh, it was, um, I was thinking about the application which would be used in warehouses to manage goods. Uh, I wanted to create the, something what would be available online. Uh, it would be modern, so I decided to go on with uh, Angular. But inside the warehouse, this is an environment when you, where you are missing internet connection and stuff like that. So I decided uh, to, uh, of course, I missed the slide. So I decided to make something what would be working offline uh, because it would be a web application. I would like to make it SEO friendly. Uh, and of course, deployed on some cheap environment. So I found uh, a solution for that, or a couple of solutions. The only thing which I need to do is to wrap them all into, uh, into one piece of software. Uh, and at the time when I was looking for those solutions, uh, the CLI wasn't really popular. Uh, people were using boilerplates to uh, start working with Angular. So I found out the Angular Webpack, Anyone was using Webpack with Angular too? Yeah, just a couple of people. <laughs> so uh, it was, for, for me, for example, it was really painful to switch to CLI. That, <laughs> uh, just a small comment. I also found a universal starter. So when I merged those, I created just yet another boilerplate. Of course, I host it on the GitHub to share it with people. Uh, that was a PWA with server-side rendering, which was deployable on the serverless environment. I was starting to, uh, to try to spread the world with, uh, with that, so I was posting the links to that boilerplate in several places. And then I met the guy uh, whose handle is Esso Sander. Uh, this is Sander Ilyaski, uh, GDE in Angular. So I think it's worth to follow him. And this guy just let me uh, one comment uh, under the link uh, of to this boilerplate. He just asked me, why you didn't use schematics? So I was start thinking, what the hell are schematics? And I was start to giving myself another question. Is Git really a place where you should keep the stuff for other developers. This is the best place to, uh, to, share, uh, to share such solutions. Because if someone would be looking for the same thing as I was, uh, and let's say that he had already developed an application, what he could do with the boilerplate? The only one thing is to clone it, rewrite his code, and hope it will be running. So this is how I, this is the first case study for schematics, in fact. This is how I start to think about that, about those. Another case study is that someone want to use just one library uh, which you are developing for them. So meet, let's say that this is Sergey. He is looking for, uh, for some 
great library for his, uh, for his already existing application. So what he is doing? First of all, he is starting with reading documentation. Later on, install the dependency uh, to his project. He is trying to, uh, to implement this dependency to make this module working. Uh, of course, he is running into some issues, uh, the compilation not working, later on the plugin is not working as he expected, so he is coming back to the documentation. After reading the documentation, he is going back to implementation, and this loop is, uh, is repeated multiple times, several times. Another case study would be uh, Dasha, she is working for a big enterprise company, uh, and she is developing a product of that company. This is a web application. Uh, let's say, like in Akamai, it's a collection of web applications, in fact, which are touching uh, different parts of the system. And of course, it's not only Dasha working there. There are multiple other teams. Uh, probably they are building their solutions on microservices, Every microservice is built up from some backend, from frontend. Let's say that all of them are working in Angular, so there are thousand multiple uh, small Angular applications which are shipped in one big HTML wrapper. Probably they are using the same database under the hood and so on. But if every of this team is developing their own frontend app, uh, we are starting to run into one issue. What if all of them would like to use a little slightly different user experience or user interface? Uh, you cannot run into a situation, it's uh, highly not recommended to give your user within this one environment, within one ecosystem, uh, different user feeling when they are navigating within the app. So, in front of those uh, people, there are often the teams which are called the front-end teams who are developing the libraries and the guidance uh, for the other teams, how the forms should look like, how, the, uh, how navigation should look like within the application, and so on. On our end, in, uh, in our product, uh, this is... A, a landing page for the API definition. This is the product which I am working with. And here you can see that, for example, we have multiple buttons. One of, one of them are enabled, one of them are disabled, one is primary button, one is not. And we want to replicate the same, uh, the same components, combo box, buttons, and so on, within different services to provide users the same user experience in the whole environment. Okay, so those are our use cases and how, to, uh, how we can uh, solve the problem of, uh, of, um, uh, of heartful of maintaining the, uh, the installation of library, uh, external libraries and following the guidance inside big enterprises. So here comes schematics. And what schematics are, how many of you have uh, used schematics before? Oh, okay, one person. How many of you are using Angular CLI? Okay, so all of you are using schematics. Because <laughs> what Angular CLI is doing, it's going to, it's picking up the schematics from the library, taking a look at the instructions which are set in the schematics and apply them to the file system. The great thing is that those schematics, those rules are extensible, so you can uh, take a couple of them and merge into one big rule. And moreover, there are atomicity. So they are working like a database transaction. There is all or nothing rule. If something will fail with one of the schematics, uh, which are chained together, nothing will be applied to don't destroy your file system and to don't leave you with the broken project. Uh, so whenever you are using ng-add or ng-init on the rgu, you are using schematics in fact. So how Angular know where to look for schematics uh, and what to apply? Whenever you are using ng-add, for example with the project which I found, uh, 
Angular first, the CLI, sends a command to Node.js to install the dependency. Then it's looking for the, uh, oh, give me a sec, then, then, it's, uh, then it's looking for this field inside the package JSON. And this point, this is pointing Angular where to look for comments which are available within this library. So collection JSON is just set of the of those comments. Uh, in example, ng add. It could be ng new. Uh, it could be, for example, generate something for me. The, the, what I'm going to say is that the list of comments it's not enumed. In fact, you can you can specify your own. Inside this uh, collection that JSON file, there are two other pointers. One is pointing to the factory, another one is pointing to the schema. We will move to factory really soon, but let's focus on the schema right now. What schema is, it's a definition of parameters which can be used with given comment. So this is the place where you are specifying everything what is after dash dash and in this case HTTP true or HTTP false. I'm giving the schematics information that I want them to run with some, uh, with some parameter which changes slightly the flow. For example, for, for the ng generate uh, component, a parameter would be a component name. So this is, the, uh, this is uh, something what is what doesn't have a default value and it's, uh, and it's mandatory. Uh, all of that is specified within the schema. Also, also the parameters which, uh, which are asked by the, uh, by the CLI prompt. So you can, uh, you can just use X prompt to, uh, to make your CLI, uh, to, to make your schematics more, more engaging for, for, for people. And finally, we are coming to the, uh, to the factory, uh, to that second field in the collection JSON, or in fact, first thing, uh, field in the collection JSON. What factory is, it's a JavaScript script, which export one function or more functions. Uh, if you export more, fun more functions, you need to uh, specify inside collection JSON for to which function uh, which function belongs to this comment. Uh, if, if you just point to the file, you need to have a default export. Uh, and this is the place where we are telling CLI what we want to do. This function uh, should return the rule option, and as parameter, it takes options which are specifying by schema. Uh, described by schema is specified by user. What the rule is? The rule object is provided by Angular team, by Angular CLI team, and simply says it's an object which, uh, which is, uh, is a function which takes a tree and returns a tree. Tree is representing the file system. So on tree object, you can run comments like create, update, override, uh, check if some file exists, uh, look up for it content, and so on, and so on, and so on. Here you can find some, uh, some methods which are, in my case, mostly used uh, on, the, on the tree object. For example, get directory, list the directory content, visits, going within the directory and check everything what is inside so you can read uh, every file uh, and manipulate the, manipulate the content. Uh, okay, so here we have an example of use uh, those methods. Um, as I said at the beginning, what is really great about schematics is that you can combine multiple of those into one, that they are chainable. You can chain them. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that you can, first of all, develop schematics as an atomic, uh, atomic step, so that would be easier for you to maintain them. But you can also run schematics from someone who already developed them. You can run external ones. So for, thanks to that, you can extend the already existing schematics. And such chain would work in the way that the tree, the, 
the object which is representing the file system is passed to the first schematic, then after this schematics apply successfully, it's passed to the next one and to the next one, and if everything in the chain uh, will, will success, then it's finally applied to the, to the file system. So let's focus on our first use case. Uh, let's say that you, have, you are a library developer, it's already published on the NPM, and you want to add schematics uh, to your project. What you need to do? So, of course, you need to keep them somewhere. So, inside the project, we are creating the schematics uh, folder inside. Uh, within each, uh, I strongly advise to create a separate folder for every action which you want the user to give, to, to, give, to, to be picked up. Uh, so, for example, ng-add. A part of that, we need to place this collection JSON inside to which the, we will be pointing from packet JSON. Uh, prepare uh, more often the separate TS config JSON for schematics, but that would be the really simple TS config because what, what we want to do is just compile TypeScript to JavaScript. There is no rocket science under the hood. And finally, uh, as I said, we are using the schematics pointer uh, and compile and publish the schematics together with our library. So, this is the files which you should have uh, inside your library. A part of this, so, so you can see in the SRC, I got the regular NGT universal. This is the module which will be consumed inside the application. This is something what I'm giving to people to use uh, to develop applications. Uh, on the same level, we have schematics, which will help them to don't, uh, to don't play around with installation and, and stuff like that, to, uh, to let chance the CLI to work with that. We have also a files directory inside. We are going to focus it uh, really, really quickly. So inside package JSON, inside the project, which I am uh, inside my library project, uh, I, I need to Specify. Th this is what I'm always specifying, the scripts. So I'm, I'm pre preparing the build, uh, which is using the ng-build prod. This is from the Angular CLI. Uh, this is the comment which is building the library in the, uh, the Angular-ish way, I would say. And after that, I am compiling the schematic with just TypeScript compiler and copy the output of, the, of that uh, into the dist folder which I am later on going to publish. Inside collection JSON, as we already said, this is just for remember, we have factory and schema. Schema looks like that, just to, to recognize. And finally, take a look at some real use case, uh, some, some real life uh, example uh, of schematics. So we are starting, I am starting with uh, importing a couple functions uh, which we are going to use. Uh, first of all, chain, because I'm going to chain multiple rules. Uh, after that, I'm, I'm importing the iToolkit universal schema. This is, uh, this is the uh, type file defined by myself just to help me uh, work with options. So now I can export my default function uh, which takes these options and I'm building up the, uh, the array of rules which I'm going to, uh, to return uh, within the chain. As I promised you, uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about this folder, about the folder files, because what this particular module is doing, uh, it's also, before the schematics, it was asking, uh, it was asking the consumer to create this file create this file, create this file, and place some content inside, and place some content, uh, content inside this file. It was not really updating the project, it was just creating new beings inside. So to don't keep uh, the content of those new beings inside the TypeScript code, you can move it to the separate folder and just copy entire folder into, into desired uh, project which will be consuming schematics. Uh, so this is, for, for this purpose, uh, you are using the uh, apply, merge with, and merge strategies uh, from the DevKit schematics. Uh, and, and just, this is one of rules 
uh, which you can push to your to your RI. Finally, we have the the, the role which we which we want to with which we want to create some some other file or we want to uh, update the code of existing files. Uh, we are chaining that all together and return uh, and return to CLI. Okay, so this is how the ng update work, uh, ng add works. What about updating the library? The case that I found a bug inside the inside my module which I developed for you. You, uh, of course, you are you are a proud open source contributor as well. So you reported this bug. Uh, we developed a fix, and we want to deliver this fix to others who already are using that. Uh, uh, and, they, and, and let's say that they need to, again, slightly change something in the project. For this purpose, in package JSON, Angular CLE, CLI is, using for, is looking for the ng-update field. So first of all, the, inside this field, uh, we are telling what are the requirements for the particular update, and where are the instructions to migrations, because one user can have your library in version one, another in version two, another in version three, and all of them want to update to version four, while the steps would be different for, for every case. Uh, so inside the migrations, you are specifying from which version, uh, for which version this migration is, and they are just applied by CLI one after another. What I strongly advise, uh, is to use ng-add together with ng-update. So just your initial schematics should be defined inside the ng-add. All of other changes, uh, it, in my opinion, is the rule of thumb uh, to develop them inside the next updates uh, and, just, uh, and just put those updates inside ng-add for those who are going to use the schematics from scratch. Okay, the pitfall which could which could happen working with source codes that that could be that could be tricky. Let's say that our library is uh, working on the window object, and we want to wrap uh, this object into some service. So we are going to ask the consumer to change all window object occurrences inside the project to this that window. Uh, so initial solution could be, hey, why don't use regex? Regex, it's, it's super easy. But this can run us into troubles which look like that. If I have the, com, uh, the, the code which the, the window uh, can occurrence in thousand different places, it don't, it, it don't need to be a variable name, it could be inside the string, it could be part of the other variable, and so on, and so on, and so on. So our regex applied to, uh, to this kind of code which run us into this output, which is definitely not desired for us and this is not what we were looking for. So what I strongly advise when you are working with schematics uh, is work with the TypeScript, like a TypeScript compiler in fact. So what you can do is to import everything from the TypeScript library here and later on, we have our default function, which we are, exp uh, which we are exporting. Uh, we are going to read the file content uh, of, the, of the file. Uh, on the tree object, we can begin an update. This will be, uh, the, thanks to that, we will get recorder, which is representing some kind of a transaction. Uh, and now, we can build up the source, the source file uh, using the using the uh, TypeScript, in fact. So, thanks to that, we can iterate through the nodes which are inside the code source, check if they are constructor declaration or if they are method declaration, if they are some literals, if they are objects, and so on and so on and so on. And if we will find the desired place, here we are looking for the constructor to add something to it, we can just, on this particular node, uh, take its position from the uh, from where it is placed in the source code. What is the position number? And just commit the update after that uh, that position to finally 
uh, insert, the, insert the update after that position to finally commit it. And with TypeScript, you can use uh, the, the function which I'm using mostly are like those. Uh, this is how I'm checking if something is something. Uh, but of course, there are much, much, much uh, more insight. What we are moving on now uh, is the second thing. I, I said at the beginning that schematics is collection of rules, and the rule is a function which accepts tree and returns tree. This is the uh, general thought. In fact, tree, uh, the rule function, can also uh, accept the context uh, object. And what context, I context is, is the context in which the schematics are applied. So context in representing the Node.js environment of your consumer. This is the place where you are calling actions like install some def different dependency. So you can, uh, with, with the tree object, you can change the content of the package JSON, for example, and using the context object, context object you can ask Node.js to run npm install and install all of the dependencies which you added to package JSON. Okay, let's switch to, the, to our second use case. So following the guidance. Uh, and I have for you yet another CLI from Angular. If someone would, uh, don't want to write the schematics from scratch, uh, just by typing it, you can use the CLI uh, which is called schematic CLI. By running the schematics blank hello, it will produce the whole boilerplate of the empty schematics for you. The pitfall here is that uh, I was really hardly trying to use these schematics with the, to use this CLI with the existing uh, library, and I didn't figure out how to do that. <laughs> so this is something what is useful, in my opinion, only when you are going to write something completely from scratch. So let's go with, uh, let's say that within our corporation we want inside every component some credential uh, informations about, about the license text that this component is written by this team or in this organization and this is the person who is responsible for that or anything different. How to do that? Of course we are not going to rewrite the ng-generate component from the regular schematics because those are great, we are just going to extend them. So we are going to run external schematic. First, we need to install this dependency inside the schematics project, the dot schematic slash angular. And, when, uh, and after this uh, schematics is run, we are going to visit each path inside the directory which is created by it look for the .ts files, and if we have that .ts file which is not empty uh, and doesn't contain the license text, we are just going to add it uh, on top of it. The next thing which I strongly advise when you are extending the existing schematics uh, is to use the same schema as, uh, to, to do not write your own schema, but use the same schema as, is, uh, as it's, it is provided, uh, provided with, uh, from the original, uh, original author. And finally, we can use the schematics. Uh, what has been done before the ng-generate uh, was applied to the project was running the npm run build in schematics to compile TypeScript to JavaScript then I navigated into project when I wanted to try those schematics, uh, and I just used the npm link uh, to point my, my schematic project as a dependency inside, that, inside the one when, where I am going to consume schematics. Okay, so that's all about developing schematics. Now, reporting and uh, some something from my experience, what is nice to use, what is nice to have. Do you remember, as at the beginning, I said the rule accept tree and returns tree? I was lying because it accepts as well context. I was lying one more time 
because it's not always returning the tree. In fact, rule can return tree, observable of tree, another rule, or void. And what we are going to use, what, what we want to, uh, to achieve now, is to get information when my schematics fail on someone's environment. And I want the, the report of this fail sent somewhere so I could go to it later uh, to don't ask people when they are filling the bags uh, something like, okay, what, or, what was your project structured like? What was the issue which you ran? What is the platform which you were using to run that? Have you been with, inside, the, inside the Angular project, inside the, in, which in which folder did you run the schematics, and so on? So I am going to create a function which will be taking the schematics as a parameter. It will be running it and wrap it into the observable and catch the error, uh, and catch the error from the original, uh, original schematics to apply some additional stuff in case, of, uh, in case of the issue. So what we have here. We are taking rule as a parameter. I am using the bug snack. Uh, this is a, for open source project, this is a free to use tool uh, for reporting issues from production uh, in uh, not only in JavaScript application, but I, as far as I know, they are supporting also different uh, languages. So I need to register with my project key with the, within the bug snack. Then I am running the ori original rule which I passed, uh, which I passed to, this, uh, to this function, and if some error occur, I am catching it with the pipe and sending to the bug snack. After that, I need to finally return something from this function. So I need to return. So so I am returning this observable. Oh, sorry. This, uh, this subject which I am creating here, and if the, if the issue occur, if I will catch something to the subject, I am just pushing the empty tree that there is nothing to apply. The schematics failed, but I catch that. I reported the issue somewhere. Uh, I'm sorry, my dear customer. But thanks to that, thanks to that wrapper, I am able to see what are the issues which my consumers are running into? Okay, how to test schematics? The last point, in fact, uh, for, for today. So let's start from the unit testing. You would test your schematics as uh, you are testing your Angular application right now. Uh, the only difference is that the setup for testing schematics is a little bit different. So what you need is schematic runner uh, from the Angular dev kit uh, library. And I strongly advise before each test uh, to prepare the empty tree with the completely fresh and, and, empty, uh, and empty Angular project. So this, this schematic runner call, run external schematic, will apply on this test tree object the ng new command from the original Angular schematics. Later, I am ready to create my test, which, testing, which is testing my schematics. So I am setting up the, setting up the options, uh, running again the, running the schematics against the tree which I created in before, before each, and checking if the, if the content of the file has changed uh, as I expect, or new, uh, or new files exist, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this is for end-to-end -end testing. What about testing it all together if, if, the, if schematics are working end-to-end? -end? I am the person who really like, who, who don't really believe the unit tests. Uh, I want to make sure that the solution is working. Uh, of course, I can't test it in production, so I shouldn't publish it to NPM, to the, to the official NPM. Uh, so for this, uh, for this you can use the Verdaccio. This is the really great program, which is a clone, which is a clone of the Node Package Manager. In fact, if you, in you are, if you are installed Verdaccio and run it on your machine, it will start to work as a proxy between you and original NPM. 
So after installing it and setting your registry to localhost, you are able to use the regular npm publish command and, don't pu and publish to Verdaccio instead of regular npm, while Verdaccio still have a connection with npm. So if you will need to use some dependency, uh, some, some external dependency, it will be installed on your end. Also, uh, Verdaccio is, uh, is making, uh, is caching the dependencies which you are installing on your machine, uh, so they are available for you when you are offline as well. Okay, so to make an end-to-end -end test, after installing the Verdaccio, you are just navigating to schematics, publish them, then navigate to your project, and apply your schematics. That's all for today. Uh, I would like to ask you all for the feedback uh, for this presentation. Um, and I think that we have a lot of time for questions. Do we? Oh, one more thing. I'm going to post this presentation on Twitter, so there would be available today in the evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a great talk. Um, uh, I want to ask about uh, any limitations when we're running uh, our um, rule code, uh, when we are navigating to file system in our schematic, uh, schema. Uh, do we have any limitations? Uh, um, can we go above our app and um, fetch some sensitive data from... Oh, uh, navigate outside the project? Yes. Oh, I didn't try it uh, any time in my life. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really nice question. I, will, I, will, uh, I don't know, in fact, but I guess that you know, the Google developers and engineers, they, are, they, they thought about that, that you could try to destroy someone's, uh, someone's system uh, so I am saying no, but not because I know that, but I just think that it would be, it would be really crazy if that would be possible. Any more? Hi. No? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, nice thing with the updating of the project. Uh, and you said you can uh, add static uh, parts into the uh, end of the files of, uh, or end of the methods with the, when you rename the methods. Can you dynamically update, uh, I don't know, signature, for example, like all these methods, sh uh, uh, all methods which are and uh, starting with the get, like return, something like that, w like with the d dynamic updates of the content. What do you understand by dynamic update? Like dep depending on the code which is, uh, which is there. Yeah, of course. I, I think that, uh, you know, it all depends on the implementation of the schematics, in fact, on the logic which you will, which you will use there. Uh, let me put it this way. For schematics, every file inside the project is just a text file, so you can do everything with it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, uh, I want to continue this question. Uh, can I do some, I, I don't know, webhooks or not web, but hooks for my code or observer or something like um, something that can work in uh, in the time uh, after loading. Uh, so, to to clarify, what you are asking for is if you can do something more than Node.js tasks and uh, changing the, the the file system, changing the content of the files. Yes. Uh, after some time, yes. Okay. Uh, so let me put it this way. I'm not sure if this is possible, but I have my, uh, I, I had an idea in my head. I didn't have a time to test it, unfortunately. Because uh, what you get inside package JSON are scripts. Yeah, there is a script section where, where you can perform 
thousands of text, tasks. You can even run some JavaScript uh, using, the, using the script inside package.json. So what I was thinking about was to create with schematics the file which would be a program which is doing something, for example, performing the uh, curl request uh, or sending the, uh, sending the data somewhere and use the, later on use the context, uh, context object, the second parameter which you are passing to the rule, to execute the script and to execute this Node.js program. So that would, be the, uh, that would be the path which I would say that try this. Okay. Thank you. Any more? So thank you done. very much.